produce a lot of fear and suspicion and things and you know of that nature in the band. So here we are, the tail end of Blink, and uh, <clears throat> we we're, we're sitting in Europe, and there's like the biggest shows I've ever played in my life, pretty much. I mean, we're we're having like seventeen thousand some people in lights, like, screaming and chanting and breaking the walls down, Blink, Blink, you know, and we're backstage like crying and screaming at each other, all about you know, 12 years of bullshit kind of leading up and uh, all coming out those, like, few nights. And we think we kind of patched it up, you know? We, we went through everything. I mean, for days and days we would argue and just get it all out and, you know, you know, I'm not starting a solo bit record or Boxcar wasn't meant to do that or all I want to do is blink, you know, but I need to be with my family and all these things. And it was all out. And then I said, okay, well, I'm going to go home. And I'm going to take six months off because that's what I need. But I'll start, um, I'll start demoing, uh, doing demos. And I think the idea of me doing demos by myself sparked some more fear again. But in my mind, I knew that the only way that I can produce my songwriting, uh, you know, at that point in my life to make it evolve, I knew I had to do it with computers. And I didn't know how to do that, so I, I just wanted to lock myself in a room and learn how to use that as a tool. Well, I think those guys might have saw that as me trying to leave them out of the recording process, which wasn't my intent at all. It was like, it, to me, it was, the, it was the equivalent of the way I play guitar and write songs at home anyways. But I'm going to grab a new tool and try and put some demos together. And <clears throat> but like I said, it was all like this fear thing. And then we have a practice. and. And, and the arguments heated up again, and they all started coming down on me again. All the stuff we talked about f for like the arguments for a week and whatever, like crazy. Like we were so exhausted after those arguments that when that stuff came up again, I couldn't even believe that we were bringing it up again. There was nothing left to say. Like so much so, like there was so much nothing. Left. We've all, I mean, we were so emotionally drained and so like. Like, it was like such a gnarly wound that opened up and we healed it, then all of a sudden the band just got ripped right back off and we're like, are you sir? Like, I cannot believe we're gonna start talking about this again. And that was the last day that that band existed in this rehearsal studio in Los Angeles. And, um, and it was such a bum out because they're such great guys and that was such a great band, but I just knew, you know, some things were said that, that I know they didn't mean, but it wasn't, it wasn't that they said these things, it was more about, I just knew that the view they had about where they wanted to take music or what they wanted to do in their own lives or how much they wanted to be gone or what they wanted the band to, to mean in their life, it was different than, than myself. It's not that I didn't want to play music or be the biggest band in the world or travel or whatever. It was like I needed to be home with my family at that moment and, it, it, and they didn't need to at that moment so I think it, it was we were butting heads so here I go so I'm walking out of the rehearsal studio and uh, and I look over at Doug my guitar tech and I said meet me in a few weeks I have another thing in mind and I drove home and as I'm driving home I wait about five miles and I make a phone call to our manager and I said I said hey um, I can't do this anymore and he's like very serious and I go to his house we walk along the beach it's midnight in San Diego, talk about everything. I just I can't do it anymore, and I can't even imagine what I would say. I can't even imagine arguing anymore. I can't even imagine going through. Um, he's like, why could? Why do you think you're gonna have to argue again? Why do you think you're gonna have to? Because well, I just know I will. We went through you know weeks of it, like weeks of it. Like what am I gonna say again? And so that's why I had manager call. I said, you know what? Just make the phone call. Tell him I'm going away, and I went away. And I sat around for three months and I said, what am I going to do with my life? And I was like, really, really, so I, I called up one of my close friends, David Kennedy. He played a boxcar racer with me. And I grew up skateboarding with him and the like. And, uh, and we're sitting at the beach, like the very next day or something. And I asked him, well, what do you want in life? You know, and he asked me the same thing. And it all boiled down to, we want to do something that so much matters, that really has a message, that really can, that can really inspire people and challenge them to do things uh, that they felt they couldn't do. And really, we wanted to make ourselves feel better. We wanted to make ourselves feel, uh, we wanted to feel like victorious in this moment where everything really seemed really shitty. So 
I uh, started planning this little band called Angels and Airwaves. And I remember the very first day of recording, because there is no rehearsals, we write songs and rehearse them, and then, but we didn't do it that way. I just grab these computers and come in and I start writing the song, doing it the way that I thought I needed to. And uh, as we got the studio put together, we plugged it in, we plugged in the electricity and whatever. We needed to test it to see if it worked. And this was all at my house because I wanted to be with my family. So I was doing it in my guest room as I was hanging out with my daughter and my wife and soon to be another, another kid coming. And uh, it's crazy, I, I, that blew me away that I have another kid already. But I, um, so I plug in a microphone and we, we bring the microphone outside to test the studio. And I said, is it on? And they said, yeah, it's on. And I went up to it and it was a real sensitive mic. And I said, we don't need to whisper. But I whispered, I was like, we don't need to whisper. It was the very first thing that got recorded. And who would have known that that statement was everything about what I wanted to feel um, about what this record was and what this band was. That's my history. <laughs> do we need to change the card? Or? No, so. um, do you think, um, going back a little bit, that, that um, possibly the, that part of the rift was created by the label offering you some kind of like a solo deal or a solo yeah. project? There is, um, I did, a, um, after I did Boxcar Eraser, which is really just an attempt for me to learn how to write songs differently so I can bring it back to the table for Blink. But, but I was really proud of it and everyone really liked it. So I, I think it created some hostilities. Well, I think, I know it did in Blink, it totally did. Uh, I was never meant to be this, this real band, but it turned out to be quite well. And we toured it for four weeks, um, but it was quite a big band for how short it was one. And, um, and then after that, I uh, wrote a song for a, a rapper named Talib Kweli. He was like this really rootsy, cool rapper that touches on social and political issues. And I, I was doing that just to see if I can write someone else a song. The song was really rad. It was great. It was a really good song. And um, as soon as the label heard it, they offered me a solo deal. Now, I was flattered, of course. But there's no way in hell I would ever quit Blink-182 and do a solo. I would feel like an asshole. I'd feel like a total dick to do something like that. But I remember there was these emails going back and forth from the label to our manager. And after 30 or 40 responses, this one was like the first one that initiated a whole host of other conversations. And they sent it over to some of the guys in the band. And they went through like, you know, all these things. They had to answer questions. And they started reading back all the way. And then the very first email out of like 30 that was on this thing was, hey, you're talking about this solo thing. So I, th so I, I think... They were always thinking that I was getting, I was planning or conspiring to leave, but it was like the craziest shit. It was like the furthest thing from the truth. But at that point, no one believed me anyway, so. That was the biggest thing. That's my hardest thing about the past to coming here was, was this was the best thing I could have ever done in my life. I'm with the best people and I'm making the best music of my career and I truly believe this is gonna be the biggest band in the world. I just don't know when. So I'm happier than I've ever been. But the way to get here it really sucked because I left under this veil of fear and suspicion and all these things that really weren't true. And even in the very last seconds, I said, you know, I'm not doing this anything on my own. I'm not trying to, to control a band. I'm not trying to write the songs by myself. I'm trying to go home, be with my family. I'm trying to learn how to write better using different tools. And uh, other than that, you know, let's keep going as usual, but it didn't happen that way. But everything happens for a reason. When I, when I was in Blink, the, when I told those guys, I, it was funny because I told those guys, I said, I'll never quit this band. And I also said, I'll never have a studio in my house. And um, I said, I never wanted to go out and do it on my own. I never, I, I had no desire to do that kind of stuff. And here I am, I have a studio in my house. I ended up quitting the band and I'm starting something new. I had no desire to quit my band. I love those guys, but they're, the, the, uh, the priorities were so different. The last conversation we had, I told those guys, I said, hey, I just want to be, I said, I want, I looked at them, I said, I want to be the biggest band in the world and I want to be your best friends and I want to love my job more than anything. I just said, I just had to be a good dad. Well, I have to be a good dad and a good husband, meaning now that I have a little two-year-old running around, I have to make sure that I'm there for her and I'm not on tour 300 days out of the year. 
well, that's it. Just let me be the best dad I can be and then we'll be the biggest band in the world. And they told me that if that was going to be my priority, then I better be cool with the repercussions. And it was really strange because I I don't really think they meant that, but that's what was coming out of their mouths at the time. So I, uh, I knew at that moment, I didn't think they were bad guys and I didn't think that they were trying to be dicks or anything. They're not, you know, I don't think that about them. I just think that what they want to do and what their priorities are are different from mine because I need to not only do I need to create music and it's absolutely a part of me a part of me and I and if I if I don't do it I'll probably explode it's in me I have to create music but I but I'm so into being a dad and I'm so into like just being a normal dude that uh I can't let my ambitions with music fuck that up at all absolutely not I mean it's like not even a question in my head and so when they kind of gave me an ultimatum over my family it was, it was really strange like it was strange and uh I I wouldn't I just knew at that moment that it wasn't for me I couldn't do it anymore and uh things up to that point have been getting strange anyways they were getting weird as far as like a separation of the band about how you know I think we just grew apart and I didn't want it for fame I didn't want it for money I had no desire to be more famous we made a lot of way more money than we ever thought we'd make and yeah it's nice to make more money but that's not uh what I'm looking for I the last thing I told him I, I said I'm all I'm not gonna quit this band I'm not asking to run this band I don't even want to be in control of it It wasn't even like an issue like that and no one knows this stuff I think that uh kids are probably thinking that they either kicked me out or there was fights over money or there was like this weird Hollywood shit and that wasn't it you know I'm, and I'm kind of that kind of guy where I'm full of passion everything I do I try and do it to the best of my ability and I jump so far into it that I get completely immersed in it and I can't even think straight or sleep until it's finished but this I've never done something like this before where I have this complete vision where I want this music to be larger than life and I want it to give you chills and I want it to make you really think and I want it to really uh, showcase who I am because I'm still that that dumb guy that I was in Blink where we make you know dumb jokes and we, you know, we used to make all these dick jokes and say stupid stupid shit and that's still such a part of me I'm still like that but I think with this music now I'm at such a different place where I just want to create something that's so extraordinary and so massive and not massive in sense of like sales but just like when you hear it and you feel it and uh and the song starts and it starts building and building and it takes you to a special like really rad different place and you just you know you get the chills and I think we're doing it so I don't know so here I am 12 years after the band Blink 182 was started which I started uh, I left and I'm starting this new project and the weird funny thing about it is this music is the best music I've ever done in my entire life and I feel it I'm only five songs into it and I know it but I'm really quite excited about it but uh